Hi there! This time we will be modified taillights with epoxy, hundreds of crystals, a smart filling, and as a result a fully working prototype, which is made just for fun. Enjoy the video! What else do I wanna do? So that both the epoxy and the car and something new. Let's push the car! Okay! Hmm. Taillights! Andrew! Huh? Let's fill the taillights with epoxy. Alex, you have epoxy in your head. You should get married. What tail lights? Maybe you want to fill the motor with epoxy too? As a result, the dismantled tail lights look like this. They are two part. That is, there are two halves on each side. One of which is located in the trunk lid, and the second is directly in the car wing. Looking ahead, I will say that this has made life much more difficult for us. As a result, the main left parts of the taillights, which are glued with a sealant, Andrew puts in a special oven in which you can properly heat the pot. Everything is simple there. Three infrared lamps, which are often used to keep chickens warm. Leave for 30 minutes and wait until the sealant warms up to 70-80 degrees. Unlike the first, the main part of the lantern, which is now warming in the oven, the second, small part, Japanese engineers for some reason decide to glue tightly. I don't know what they were thinking, but in any wear situation, we take a disc grinder. In our case, this one is a small disc grinder and we split the taillights. Although, looking ahead, I will say that it was unnecessary and we redid it a couple of times. This is most often the case, since most of our projects are made for the first time and in a single copy. In the process, we often change the concept and add something, so the video doesn't always correspond to logic and common sense. That's our job! After the shell in the form of a diffuser is cut off, we move on. By the time the lights have warmed up to the required temperature, we can get to them too. First of all, we snap off the clamps. Fortunately, the plastic is warmed up, it is flexible and pliable. And then we promptly tighten the diffuser until the sealant didn't dry the second time. As a result, we have four split cases. The next step is to get contour of the upper lining, since initially the shape and dimensions of the light clearly match to the car body, and in order not to work out the outer contour and the thickness of the edge, we just cut out the frame, and later we will glue it to the light. This is done with the help of a Dremel tool, and I will tell you that this work is not pleasant, because the plastic heats up, coagulates into clots, and these red-hot clots fly in all directions, including in your face. This wasn't news to me, but it turned out to be a surprise for Alex. Meanwhile, the safe has not yet been assembled, and the frames are almost ready, and they look like this. It remains to bring them a little and adjust them, but when they're placed. In order to place all the necessary stuffing, we remove all the partitions in the lights with the help of a cutter, in order to make a free layout in the future. After we have freed up the maximum space in the lights, we need to make platforms on which the crystals and LEDs will be placed. Here we decided not to jump over our heads and took the remnants of the diffuser, since we only needed frames from them, which we had cut out here there. And these remnants solve all our issues. Firstly, the plastic is rigid and completely repeats the curved shape of the taillight. Since it was a taillight, it's simple. We adjusted the shape of the lights, simultaneously cut an axis. So we have all the necessary constructor, 
and we will build it with the help of a two-component car putty. As a result, the plastic of the reflector is inserted into the lantern and the perimeter is smeared with putty. In fact, it is in its regular place from the factory only 3-4 cm lower. This is our idea. The second small tail lights are made according to the same principle. But here we used thin plastic, since the platform is flat, and it's much easier and faster to process this material than a thick rigid reflector. The next step is roughly grinding the putty, and before the final application, we fasten the pre-cut frame in order to accurately understand the dimensions. We also attach this frame to the putty. First, we put a couple of dots and apply the former reflector to its former place. As a result, we have a light, which in dimensions exactly corresponds to the factory design. But we will deal with the filling a little later. But then everything goes according to the old plan. More putty a couple of meters of sandpaper, a transitional primer, and two days later we have four forms. Now it remains to paint them and cover them with a matte varnish. And now, the most interesting thing is the production of crystals. To do this, we take these reusable silicon molds and make the resin. It was very important to me that the crystals didn't look like cheap plastic cones. That's why I turned to Olga Art for Start. And here's why. She makes these shapes by taking casts of real natural crystals. That is, each crystal is an exact copy of a natural stone. Accordingly, they are all different and unique. I'll leave her Instagram in the description. If you are interested in the whole topic, then you are clearly there. A huge amount of cool and enjoyable content. I boldly recommend it. As a result, we made several samples of different colors and realized that transparent crystals, slightly tinted with blue dye, would look as impressive as ever. All the other options already looked more like plastic and didn't look so presentable. So, we have two components out of three. The taillight housing that we made earlier, crystals, they will play the role of a diffuser. Now it remains only to highlight them. To do this, we ordered an address RGB tape with the most dense arrangement of LEDs. After the tape is cut into strips of the desired length, we solder it. As a result, we have prepared this layer of eight bands for each taillight. We drill a hole in the case where we will pull the wires. The next step is to glue strip after strip. It's not particularly important here that the tape is perfectly evenly spread out, since the crystals that will be located on top will still lie as chaotically as possible. But more on that a little later. All electronics and the program were handled by Alexei. And now a few words about how it works. The RGB address strip 2812B will be responsible for the illumination of the tail light. We took 144 LEDs per meter so that there was maximum brightness. The Arduino Nano will control the backlight of the tape. This is a microcontroller, well, or, in fact, a small computer with its own memory and processor. Here, we write the program accordingly in the Arduino IDE, using the standard library for this tape by Adafruit NeoPixel. The program is quite simple, and there are, I think, many examples of how to manage this tape. But in order to make sure that everything will work, we check the operation of the program in the Proteus emulator. Here the scheme is assembled and the algorithm of the program is fully checked. Here, launching, and immediately we have almost full functionality. Dimensions, more precisely, the brake light of the taillights, turn signals. Thus, we check the full functionality of the program. Finally, we have all three elements of the puzzle. We will connect them using epoxy. In our case it's compound called Arteco by Ecovenna. By the way, we made these crystals from it. Need a little resin and pour it into the light's body. This layer will play the role of a conductor and this is important, because in the future we will fill the gaps between the crystals with a black composition. With the slides it's simple and clear, 
because the shape is even, but with the main curved lights, everything is much more complicated. Here, we try to use thicker resin and all sorts of alternative techniques. After all the crystals are placed in their places and the resin has dried, we need the molding plastic, tint it with the black dye and fill in all the gaps between the crystals. As a result, most of the tape and wiring are hidden, and the design becomes more pleasant. Here is a good example before and after black plastic. Many people will probably have questions about the practicality and adequacy of the thing. Yes, at this stage and in this version, this is an unsuitable technology for everyday use. This is just a prototype that it just wanted to make. Such prototypes are made in order to understand how it will look like. Ideally, in the future, we can make a practical working model out of this. Take a cast from the compositions of crystals and cast in a whole piece. And make the base matte so that the LEDs are not visible through the crystals. Also, make a good LED module with passive cooling, which can be replaced if anything. And of course, put a protective glass that will cover the crystals and they will be clean in another. All this is easy and can be done after this prototype is tested. And uh, if we like the result. Such alterations are commonly called modifications. And this is our first experience. If you are interested in this topic, then we have a lot more ideas in this direction. And we have already made a river table, then a river door, but what about the river lights? In general, if this is the direction you are interested in, and the video will gather good views, then in the very near future we will do another modification. But the best way to help spread this video is to share it anywhere. Also, a long comment, like and subscription will help the promotion too. Thank you for watching and catch positive attacks from the axe.